Delighted now to be joined by the CPL Commissioner David Clanacan on a really exciting day for Canadian soccer and the Canadian Premier League. Uh, David, you've announced a new format for the league in 2021. Please share with us uh, your vision and the format for that with our listeners and viewers. Yeah, well, thanks, KJ. It's good to see you and uh, and obviously talk to you. Um, by the way, congratulations on on your work at One Soccer. Now you've uh, you've hit the ground running for sure. Thank you. But, uh, but as far as the format's concerned, no, we're, we're very pleased with, with kick, doing the, what we're calling the kickoff in Winnipeg. All eight teams are on the ground now. We have just under 300 people there. I think it's just over about 275. I'm happy to report to everyone that we're showing negative results on all the pest testing we've done. So we're doing what we normally do, is, and that's adhering to the, the proper safety protocols. So we're very pleased there. This year, we've added a little twist, though, is uh, one of the things we're, t- we're talking about is um, people have been asking us, well, what's the format? We know you're in you're in Winnipeg. You're going to play through to the end of July. Uh, and then you're going to go back to home markets, which I've been very clear. That's what we want to do. Uh, let's go back to home markets. And the way things are starting to shape up in the country, we're going to be able to do that with fans and supporters in the stands. I couldn't be happier. I feel like it's Christmas Day for me right now. Uh, especially with the the uh, announcement today in Ontario, which is is is, is good news all around because that's obviously the province we were worried the most about. So, uh, yeah, we're very good there. And so we've decided that what we want to do is we want to now bring four four teams into uh, into the uh, I'll call it the playoff series uh, with the uh, with the four teams uh, when they're ranked first through fourth, they'll move forward. Two single game semifinals, one versus four, and then two versus three. Of course, the, the one and two teams would host that single game format. That's why they work so hard and the matches mean so much uh, throughout everything, KJ. So at the end of the day, we want every ma- every match to count. And so they're always going to be striving to be able to, to have their fans host that, that, that semifinal match. The two winners will then, will then play off in a one game final. And the, the winners, the two winners from the semifinal, that, team which finishes highest in the standings again one more reason to want to be first right mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. you do is if you win in the semifinal game you get to host the championship match so a one game final we think that's going to be fantastic it gets us to where we want to be and we'll have a full season in we'll play all of our games like we had planned and and, and a good uh, a good uh, playoff and championship uh, round so that we can crown our champion we think it's uh, we've uh, we, we we were dealt lemons so to speak uh, in Canada this year, and I think we've made lemonade out of it with this solution. So we're very pleased. Yeah, really, a lot of things to, ple- to be pleased about. Let's dissect it and get into some of the information you mentioned. Obviously, expanding it to four teams. I know that's what we had last year at the Island Games as well, but a completely different format, really, with a tournament. Uh, why was it imperative for you and the and the league to expand it there? Is it just because it's a bit of a unbalanced schedule? And also, as you mentioned, the illusion that almost every game is so important, and I can really imagine the really excitement to get into that top four as the season goes on. Yeah, and you, you've hit it right on, KJ. The, the, the bottom line is that, that we definitely, uh, we have an unbalanced schedule, just the way that we're doing it. And why we're doing the bit of the un, unbalanced schedule is really to keep the travel uh, and and the uh, exposure for our players. So it's safety of our players, but also making sure that we get to play games at home. But, but we want to keep travel to a minimum. So the back half of the year after we leave Winnipeg, there'll be some unbalanced that. So that's caused uh, most of that, but, but we see it as a great opportunity. Right. By adding another team in similar to what we did in in uh, PEI in the Island Games. I saw it last year that last weekend, you know, when, when, when I was sitting with very few fans in the stands that were allowed in, in, in into the, the Island Games uh, venue. Uh, it was amazing that last weekend because we had seven teams literally that were still in the hunt to make it to the final, I'll call it the final four to steal someone else's expression. Right. But, but we also had the eighth team who could have been a spoiler for somebody as well. So everybody was in it to win it that weekend. And you want that. It's uh, it's something that I admire about other leagues across the sea, so to speak, mm-hmm. that they kind of use promotion relegation as a, as a tool to keep everybody interested. Right. This is another way of doing it for us right now in the, in the part in where we are as a league, but I think it's going to work really well and, and, and Canadians are going to love it. I think so too. You talked also about what you learned last year from the Island Games and the rivalries are really starting to get going, aren't they, in the league? And rivalries are important in all sports, are they not? You know, to have that kind of a little bit of friendly conflict, a little bit and and, and, and have that banter between fans. What you're going to now have is that the teams that 
are playing each other in the Winnipeg bubble right now will only play each other four times. They'll, those out of regional games, the teams that aren't playing each other in the bubble right now will play each other, you know, collectively 16 times, you know, against three different opponents. That's really excitement as well. I know there's a lot of games against a lot of similar teams, but to gather that kind of rivalry is going to be an interesting momentum as well. Well, I think you're, you're hundred percent right. I mean, we have some of those natural rivalry, rival rivalries, easy for me to say that have, that have, that have happened over, uh, over the first couple of years, whether it be 2019 and then obviously the Island games, we, we all know cavalry forge FC, uh, it's a tinderbox. We know that, uh, but we're seeing it with the 905 Derby with 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 York United and and Forge. We know that's going to be there. We know that that FC Edmonton and Cavalry have got that rivalry. Everyone wants to play Pacific because they've got a bit of a swagger to them because they're from Vancouver Island. And of course, you've got the the guys that have gone from 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 last to to runners up last year at H HFX Wanderers, who are really kind of uh, you know a relatively young team that are really feeling it themselves. So competition is all there and don't forget you've got you've got valor who always feels like they, they, they they're in the middle of the country and get forgotten yes. and atletico ottawa who hasn't played a game in their own stadium yet and everyone's going to want to be in ottawa when for the first time they get to play because i can tell you people there's a pent-up demand for, for for live professional football in that marketplace yeah, I agree with you. I'm really excited about that team and the way that they formatted that team as well in the offseason in Ottawa. We'll get to getting into market shortly. Just a quick word before we do uh, about what's coming. Obviously, kickoff in Winnipeg in the bubble this weekend. Uh, it's been over nine months since our league has, been, has really kicked a ball in anger and we've awarded a trophy. Uh, what does it say about the clubs, the owners, the players, everybody within this league, David, that they've had the the perseverance and the patience and the strength to get through this difficult time for everybody. And now here we go, getting ready to start a new season. Yeah. You know, it's, that's a great point. You know, our owners have been nothing but patient and, 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 but they preached patience to me when they, when they uh, invited me to come, come aboard this project, so to speak. So I, I, I fully expected that, but they've shown tremendous patience, incredible patience. Our players and coaches and staff have done a great job. The league office has been good. I think, you know, when I look at it and I look back, We've, we've maintained our creativity, which we showed we had those that DNA in 2019. We've, we've, been, we've shown that we're nimble and that we're prepared to try things and that we believe in the game and we won't go dark. We believe it's important to do it. But we're always going to we're, we're, we're a bit of rule followers. We're, we're kind of that way in Canada anyways. So the fact that we're, we're, we're prepared to do it that way and work with people, I think that brings you along. Right. And in the communities where we where we play football, people respect that. And, and I think we've garnered, a, 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 I think, a, a good level of, 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 of that respect. We still have to prove ourselves every single day. Mm -hmm. Every time we go out on the pitch, we've got to be better. And I, and I honestly, as I look at the, te the teams as they're, as they're being put together this year and seeing all the players that have been signed, I, I really like the way the clubs are coming together. There's a, there's a, there's a deeper, an even deeper level of thought about how they're building their clubs. So I, I just think the, the, the rivalries will be great, but the matches will be excellent. And the format just plays into that. Yeah, I agree with that. The standard of the, uh, of the sport will go up. No question about it. Um, David, I know there's a lot of people listening to this who are big fans of their teams and just cannot wait to get them back in the stadium to put their scarves, their shirts on, to go and sing their songs and to cheer on their local teams. Uh, share with us, if you can, some of the ideas you have. I know, obviously, nothing is in place right now, but um, coming out of the bubble, we expect it to be games potentially, as you said, into home markets. Uh, how do you see that with fans right away in certain areas? And, and, and give us a, a little bit of a timeline, what you're looking at there. Well, there's no, there's no doubt. Um, right now, it's looking like uh, that the, the most of the markets will be open. We don't know for sure until the until the provinces, uh, basically, until they actually give it to us in writing and they and they announce it. Right? We 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 know there's going to be lots of protocols wrapped around that. Could be anywhere from 25 percent to 50 percent in 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 most of the markets, but we don't know. And again, we can't work on off of innuendo and, and rumors. Uh, we need it in writing. We need to see the protocols. We we need to be ready and, and make sure that it's seamless for our fans and supporters because we know that they're going to come back in droves. They're going to want to be there and experience that. The good news is they'll have enough confidence in the fact that we do things right. They'll feel good about coming to the games. I would say, and I and I said this, uh, you know, with a with a in, on an interview for BEI the other day, uh, basically saying that you know the best thing that we all can do as Canadians is Canadians is get our vaccines. 
get our vaccines. It's important. You look at what's happening in the country right now with the amount of vaccines that are out there and the and second doses. Those are that's important. It's important to the country, but it's also important to live sport and also to be able to go and enjoy the events that that we love the most. And, and in Canada, we love live sports. So uh, that, I think that's that's one message I'd like to put out there. But but we're going to we're going to have some fun this summer. That's for sure, KJ. Yeah, we'll have a lot of fun this summer. The fans will be back and we're really excited to welcome them. Envision a moment after that then. You know what it's like in Canada. It's a beautiful time in fall. It starts to get a bit cooler. Then comes the playoffs. You talked about it earlier. Uh, I know in 2019, there was the, the, the brilliant rivalry you, you alluded to earlier between Cavalry and Forge about the two-legged playoff. We had that game last year at the Island Games, that one-off. Talk to us a little bit about how excited you are to have that one-game final uh, to, to award a champion in 2021. Well, certainly the one the one game final is very interesting for us because, I mean, you think about it, it's one game, it's 90 minutes, you know, 90 minutes extra time if right. needed. Right. But, uh, but at the end of the at the end of the day, it's 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 going to be decided on that day. And so the focus that championship day and the lead up to that championship day, I think the I don't know who would be more nervous at that point in time, the the the, the coaches and the players or the fans and supporters, depending on which teams, which teams are in. Right. But I, I just know that it, there's a huge build up to it. It's something that everyone's looking forward to and it gets really passionate. And so, you know, having been to some of the largest matches in the world overseas, it's an unbelievable experience. And it's not a, it's not a two or three hour experience. It's a two, three, four, five day experience for some, right. I was at, Champions League final in Madrid a couple of years ago. And I know for a fact there were 20,000 Liverpool fans that were in Madrid that didn't even have tickets for the game. Right. So that's what happens, right? And so I think it'll be, uh, it's going to be a great, uh, a great final, no matter which team is in it. And uh, I'm hoping we get a lot of travel from fans. We know that people will be ready for that as well. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting 2021. As you said earlier, we didn't know how it was going to look, but 112 match season with playoffs and a final and a champion awarded in November. We cannot wait. David, congratulations on getting to this news and to getting this stage. I know you deserve a ton of credit and you've got a great team around you as well. Thanks so much for your time today and we'll catch up again soon. All right, KJ, thanks very much. And also, I do want to thank the province of Manitoba and the municipality of Winnipeg, they've done such a great job for us. They've opened their doors to us, uh, their hearts, their minds, their doors. And uh, we're very, very pleased to be kicking off in one of our home markets. Uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, well, very well said. A reminder, kickoff starts on Saturday, 1.30 Eastern on One Soccer as we get going with FC Edmonton against Atletico Ottawa.